So continuing on the quest to find a finite list of the best of the best divisible numbers, what I want to do is I want to go back to sigma, the sigma function, and to superabundant numbers. And we can do exa essentially exactly the same trick as Ramanujan did with d of n uh, to sigma of n. So this uh, goes back to Ramanujan. I think the history is that this is the part of his paper that didn't get published due to paper shortages uh, in the 19-teens. And Erdős, the famous Hungarian mathematician, and his collaborators came up with something that they didn't realize they were redoing Ramanujan's work. I think that's accurate, but I haven't looked at the history in detail. So we already knew that uh, it was a good idea to take sigma of n and divide it by n, because otherwise it just grew really way too fast and it wasn't fair to the smaller numbers. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to uh, divide it again by n to the a, or in other words, it's sigma of n over n to the 1 plus a. And a's you want to think of as a pretty small number. Okay. Once again, that tames the growth completely of sigma of n. Um, and in fact, that's going to have a maximum for any a greater than 0. So again, it depends on the a we pick, what, where the maximum is going to be, how we tune things. I'm not going to draw uh, pi pictures, uh, MATLAB graphs like the one I had before, but they're very similar. Um, for different a's, we're going to get different maxima. Um, and again, the location of the max is going to move out to the right on the number line as a goes to 0. So as that tuning goes down to 0, it's going to be easier and easier for sigma of n to beat n to the 1 plus a for a lot of small numbers, but eventually it kind of wimps out a little bit and starts to be beaten by n to the 1 plus a. And uh, you're going to get different locations for the maximum. So I think this is Erdős's terminology, um, a colossally abundant number is one of the maxima. So again, you pick an A, you look at the whole graph, you look at the one place where it's going to be best, where sigma of n best compares to n to, to 1 plus A for that particular A, and that picks out one of these guys. Then you try another A, and another A, and another A, and you're going to get different numbers. Now, not remotely any number is going to work. It's easy to show, just as how I showed um, for highly composite numbers, that these guys are a subset of the superabundant numbers. And again, they're a kind of a moderately thin subset of them. You throw away a lot of the ones that were just plain superabundant and aren't performing quite as well by this test. It's a, it's a more stringent test. Now, Ramanujan again showed the ratio of one superior highly composite to the next, or to the previous one really, is a prime number. Well, that's only still a conjecture for, uh, for colossally abundant numbers. That has not, not been proved. Okay, but there's no counterexamples known, certainly. Um, so it looks like the same, the very same kind of pattern. Um, now, we're getting pretty special. Um, we're pretty much converging. For small numbers, we're kind of converging on an agreement on these small numbers are really, really, really divisible by any measure, any reasonable measure. And so what it does is it starts out um, the same as the list of superior highly composite numbers. But eventually, the, the, the patterns, again, are different. If you analyze carefully, and I'm not going to do that, not an expert enough to do that, um, if you analyze carefully the pattern of primes, the pattern of exponents of primes that make up a colossally abundant number, it's going to eventually want to have a somewhat different shape, a subtly different shape than uh, superior highly composite. So they're going to diverge eventually. And here's the cool thing. Because of that divergence, the intersection is actually a finite list. Okay, so let's look at the list again. So that's why I've got these two lists right next to each other. Superior highly composite, SHC, and CA, colossally abundant numbers. And the things that are highlighted in green are the ones that we're, um, they agree. Uh, and again, conjecturally, you should be able to build up all the colossally abundant numbers by just starting with two, and then, uh, then just multiplying in prime numbers one after the other. For the first... 15 of these things on the list, it's exactly same, the same, what you put in. And the shapes, uh, this kind of shape of exponents is good for both being SHC and CA. Then it starts to diverge a bit, but not ridiculously at first. Here, to get to the 16th SHC, you put a 2 in, and then the 23 to get to the next one. Uh, CA says, no, I'd rather put in the 23 first and then the 2. Um, then this block here, this yellow block is, an, again, the same four numbers, but just put in a different order. So at the end of it, you actually get another um, equality. You get the same number. 
here's another yellow block where you diverge for a while just because the, the way you put these things in and then you come back for this one and then interestingly enough come back for this pair as well because the 47's actually go in at the same time then the last block that as far as I know where everything is uh, matches up eventually is going up to 59 and this is the last I'm pretty sure this is the last number where you get SHC and CA the same it is proved that there the, the overlap is finite I'm just not a hundred percent sure that I've actually found the last one I'm pretty sure though because if you actually look at the numbers beyond that these lists you start to get a pretty marked um, divergence just in the size of the numbers for example down here at number 60 we got 10 to the 75th 10 to the 81st um, and so the CAs just just like we had the comparison between superabundant and highly composite when you look at these more special guys the colossally abundant here versus the superior highly composite um, it turns out that uh, these guys the colossally abundant are going a bit faster they're just a little bit scarcer so this list of green ones is our um, one one candidate for the finite list of numbers that are just amazingly divisible um, they Fall, they, they pass two stringent tests. They pass the superior high composite test for some testing tuning value of A, and they pass the colossally abundant test, which has to do with sigma instead of D, for some tuning value of A. Um, and so the biggest one here, it's about 6 times 10 to the 26th. And if you look at the prime factorization, it's 2 to the 7th, 3 to the 4th, 5 cubed, 7 squared, and then times 11, 13, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera up to 59. Um, the one, and I think this is pretty special too, this is the, the top of the, the contiguous sequence where they are the same, 698-377-6800. If you look back here, these are the other ones, these are the ones in my subtitle. Um, I liked 10 digit numbers, it's fun to try to remember them as phone numbers. Uh, it turns out 698 is a non-existent area code, so you can't actually call this number. But 698-377-6800 uh, that's the last one where uh, they've they've been together com completely and contiguously, and then here's that other funky number. This is the last, the biggest of the intersection of um, superior highly composite and colossally abundant. So if you want a finite list, a pretty decent finite list of anti primes, very very divisible numbers, uh, this list in green is not a bad list. In the next video, I'll talk about why is 5040 additionally special compared to these guys. I haven't really explained that, but it turns out to, in a somewhat more sophisticated sense, be the very, very best of these amazingly divisible numbers.